European Space Agency give us a look at life beyond Earth with the Venice Biennale Lunar Habitat. Living on the moon may sound far-fetched now, but it will most certainly become a reality in the coming decades, and the European Space Agency, ESA, wants to spark your imagination with this interesting lunar habitat, created by one of the world's leading architectural firms Skidmore, Owings and Merrill, SOM. Retired NASA astronaut Jeffrey Hoffman, now professor at MIT's Department of Aeronautics and Astronautics, worked with the SOM team on the livability of their design, based on his experiences in space. This lunar habitat consists of the inflatable beam module currently attached to the International Space Station and adds a semi-inflatable shell structure to offer the highest possible volume to mass ratio. Once this structure is inflated on the lunar surface, it would achieve double its original internal volume. The four-story habitat interior offers various lighting conditions, reconfigurable modules, and a high floor-to-ceiling space to enable crew members to take advantage of lunar one-sixth gravity using grabbing bars as well as other simple tools to make life easier. Worldview Balloon Virtual Space Tourism Flight to the Stratosphere Take virtual flight with Worldview's Virtual Space Tourism Flight to the Stratosphere. This video showcases the entire launch to landing experience of what it will be like aboard the Worldview Explorer spaceflight capsule. Worldview, the leading stratospheric ballooning company, announced journey to the world's most amazing destination, the edge of space, though space tourism is simply too expensive for the vast majority of humans, progress is slowly being made towards making space more accessible. Worldview's mission is to bring as many people as possible to the edge of space so that at 100,000 feet 30 km, they'll see a world without borders or species and come back driven to make the world a better place that will last 6 to 12 hours. Worldview participants will rise from spaceports across the world, gently floating in the atmosphere for hours to experience the Earth's curvature and the darkness of space unlike space tourism trips on a rocket. Passengers will gently and gradually lift up into the stratosphere worldview. The innovation behind Hassel's Mars Settlement Hassel's Mars Settlement divides the structural mechanism into two parts, an outer shell to be made by remote control machines and the inflatable pods to be instantly built by astronauts. Through the ongoing planetary studies carried out by America's space agency NASA, moving to Mars has become an everyday subject. Supervised by NASA's Centennial Challenges Program and Bradley University in Peoria, the 3D printed Habitat Challenge was an attempt to anticipate the possibilities of building technology on the Red Planet, which could also enhance future research for the space environment. Selected among the top 10 designs in this competition, the smart construction idea of Australian-based architecture studio Hassel and the UK-based Eckersley O'Callaghan engineers presented a manufacturing innovation with robotics and 3D printing technology. Designing a spacecraft for astronauts is about surviving on another planet for a certain period of time, but creating a place that helps adapt our lives to different spatial conditions goes further than that. To propose a human-centric habitat, the architects of this project aim to keep the people thriving on Mars. Moreover, building on a totally different globe was another issue for this competition. To orbit and back with Space Rider Europe's bid to deliver a return to Earth service for in-orbit transportation and research projects is rapidly taking shape with teams working on the Space Rider spacecraft gearing up for a series of drop tests in 2023. Drop tests with small-scale models will be followed by a full-scale test in anticipation of inaugural flight towards the end of 2024. Engineering teams recently concluded the project's critical design review and expect to consolidate the design early in 2023. Work is also underway to finalize selection of payloads that will fly on the first flight. The reusable Space Rider will be a so-called lifting body vehicle, 
about the size of two minivans. It is designed to land with 150M accuracy under a steerable parachute known as a parafoil, which will be the subject of some of the upcoming drop tests. Launch will be by the Vega C rocket, which completed its inaugural flight in July 2022 from Europe's spaceport in French Guiana. Bringing Mars rock samples back to Earth NASA and the European Space Agency are developing plans for one of the most ambitious campaigns ever attempted in space, bringing the first samples of Mars material safely back to Earth for detailed study. The diverse set of scientifically curated samples now being collected by NASA's Mars Perseverance rover could help scientists answer the question of whether ancient life ever arose on the Red Planet. Bringing samples of Mars to Earth for future study would happen in several steps with multiple spacecraft, and in some ways, in a synchronized manner. This short animation features key moments of the Mars Sample Return campaign, from landing on Mars and securing the sample tubes to launching them off the surface and ferrying them back to Earth. Animation is contributed by NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, the European Space Agency, Goddard Space Flight Center, and Marshall Space Flight Center. Space Perspective, a $125,000 balloon ride to the stratosphere. Florida-based space tourism company Space Perspective has started selling seats for luxurious balloon rides to the stratosphere in 2024. The price $125,000 US dollars per person. Introducing a new era in luxury travel experiences, up to 8 guests can experience 360 degrees views of planet Earth from 20 miles 30 kilometers above, in a 6-hour trip inside the spaceship Neptune capsule complete with reclining sets, a bar, and a bathroom. Founded by space travel experts Jane Pointer and Tabor McCallum, Space Perspectives uses flight technology extensively tested by NASA. The ascent is safe and gentle, as the capsule is propelled by a state-of-the-art space balloon the size of a football stadium from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. It doesn't use rocket propulsion nor engender G-force acceleration, it's a hydrogen-filled balloon which also addresses the demand for sustainable travel, resulting in a zero-emission spaceflight. Meet the Von Braun Station, the most advanced rotating space hotel designed to date. It's inevitable. A rotating orbital space station open to tourists is inevitable. The only questions are how soon, at what price and what comfort, and what will be the first company to make it happen. I'll present to you below the company that has laid out the clearest plans to get there to date. Their vision is bold to say the least, it's simply the most ambitious yet inevitable startup idea I've seen in a long time. Please meet the Von Braun station below, a rotating station to be built in Earth orbit, that is planned to have a total population of 400 people, including over 100 crew. Construction is supposed to start in 2025 and be over by 2027. The station is of course named after Werner von Braun, the German and later American aerospace engineer and space architect. Werner von Braun led the development of the Nazi Germany V-2 rockets, then later served as director of the newly formed Marshall Space Flight Center and as the chief architect of the Saturn V Super Heavy Lift launch vehicle that propelled the Apollo spacecraft to the moon. The sci-fi plan to create artificial gravity on the moon Mars. It involves large spinning cones and a space train component. Japanese researchers want to protect astronauts' health on the moon and Mars by building space habitats that spin to create artificial gravity but pulling it off will be a huge, multi-generational undertaking. The challenge, more than 50 years of space exploration has taught us that microgravity can wreak havoc on astronauts' bodies causing weak bones, muscle loss, and vision problems. 
Gravity isn't as weak on the moon and Mars as it is in space, but it is a lot weaker than on Earth, one-sixth and one-third the strength, respectively. Before we send people to live in either location long term, we need to figure out how to protect their health. Dubbed Luna Glass and Mars Glass, each facility is shaped like a huge hollow cone more than 1,300 feet tall, almost as tall as the Empire State Building. As the cone spins, centrifugal force will push anything inside them toward the interior walls. If you've ridden the rotor or the Gravitron in an amusement park, the concept is similar. ESA Solaris Wireless Power Beamed Down From Space Solar power gathered far away in space, seeing you're being transmitted wirelessly down to Earth to wherever it is needed. The European Space Agency plans to investigate key technologies needed to make space-based solar power a working reality through its Solaris initiative. One such technology, wireless power transmission, was recently demonstrated in Germany to an audience of decision makers from business and government. Credit Airbus Solar power could be gathered far away in space and transmitted wirelessly down to Earth to wherever it is needed. The European Space Agency ESA, plans to investigate key technologies needed to make space-based solar power a working reality through its Solaris initiative. Recently in Germany, one of these technologies, wireless power transmission, was demonstrated to an audience of decision makers from business and government. The world's next breakthrough innovation platform is in orbit. The construction of the world's first commercial space station is underway. Following the completion of preliminary and critical design reviews in collaboration with NASA, our partners at Thales Alenia Space began welding and machining activities for the primary structures of Axiom Station's first module. The first pieces of fabricated flight hardware are beginning to come together, and the assembled module will join us in Houston soon where we will complete final assembly and integration. Axiom Space is preparing for a late 2025 launch of the first section of our next-generation platform that will operate in low-Earth orbit. Axiom Space is the only company with the privilege of connecting its modules to the International Space Station. This partnership and strategic connection allows Axiom Space to effectively adopt and service the multinational user base of the ISS National Laboratory to seamlessly continue research and manufacturing initiatives. The Axiom Space Station will host people, research, and manufacturing that will lead development for numerous industries using techniques that are available only in microgravity. The European Space Agency ESA, has released a new video describing the Moonlight Initiative, part of NASA's Artemis program. ESA is a key partner in Artemis, which aims to return people to the moon by the end of decade. Dozens of other international public and private missions are setting their sights on the lunar surface in the coming years. However, to achieve a permanent and sustainable presence on the moon, reliable and autonomous lunar communications and navigation services are required. ESA is working with industrial partners on the Moonlight Initiative, to become the first off-planet commercial telecoms and satellite navigation provider. After launch, three or four satellites will be carried into lunar orbit by a space tug and deployed one by one to form a constellation of lunar satellites. The number and specification of these satellites are being defined. The constellation's orbits are optimized to give coverage to the lunar south pole, where sustained sunlight and polar ice make it the focus of upcoming missions. Artemis I, European Service Module Perspective The Orion spacecraft with European Service Module will fly farther from Earth than any human-rated vehicle has ever flown before. This video gives an overview of the first mission, without astronauts, for Artemis, 
focusing on ESA's European service module that powers the spacecraft. The spacecraft will perform a flyby of the moon, using lunar gravity to gain speed and propel itself 70,000 km beyond the moon, almost half a million km from Earth, further than any human has ever traveled, where it will inject itself in a distant retrograde orbit around the moon. On its return journey, Orion will do another flyby of the moon before heading back to Earth. The total trip will take around 20 days, ending with a splashdown in the Pacific Ocean without the European service module, it separates and burns up harmlessly in the atmosphere. The second Artemis mission will have a simplified flight plan with only a flyby of the moon but with four astronauts. The third Artemis mission will see astronauts taken to the lunar surface. The European Service Module is ESA's contribution to NASA's Orion spacecraft that will send astronauts to the moon and beyond. It provides electricity, water, oxygen and nitrogen as well as keeping the spacecraft at the right temperature and on course. The European Service Module has 33 thrusters, 11 kilometers of electrical wiring, for propellant and two pressure tanks that all work together to supply propulsion and everything needed to keep astronauts alive far from Earth, there is no room for error.